It's Wednesday, August 23. In the headlines, Labour Minister to travel to Canada amid farm workers' controversy. In business news, BOJ Governor warns against massive wage increases. Regionally, in Barbados, sanctions impacting restart of Petro Caribe. Internationally, BRICS Summit Day 2, leaders meeting on the way in Johannesburg. And in sports, Jamaica makes history at World Championships. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. A 48-hour curfew has been imposed in sections of the St. Elizabeth Police Division. The curfew started at 6 p.m. on Tuesday and will continue until 6 p.m. Thursday. The areas affected are Claremont, Newmarket, Springfield, Ginger Hill and Maybowl. During the hours of the curfew, persons within its boundaries are required to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized by the ground commander. Meanwhile, head of the St. Elizabeth Division, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Coolridge Minto, says his team has been increasing its presence in the Santa Cruz Town Center. As part of the operation, we are hearing from the citizens in this area, the business operators, we would have spoken with persons from the micro business sector right up to the macro level as well as the financial institutions representatives and getting an understanding of what's happening in the town center i must say that the feedback from the citizens is very very reassuring even as we are out here to encourage them and to reassure them that we're here to stay he has a word of caution to citizens and criminal elements it will not be business as usual we have our teams operating we are going after them we would have had as as you know two recent fatal shootings with persons who were engaging our officers and so we appeal to the persons in this space not to engage our police officers uh, to surrender to the police and to allow the justice system to take its course. He says the police will be increasing its presence across the parish as per request of the citizens. A critical point that they would have made is, you know, they want to see us more. They want to see the, the presence of the police, the patrols, the engagement, and the feedback is, is very complimentary. Uh, as I engage taxi operators, as I engage the you know, persons selling in the markets, the bankers, the business operators, the Chinese personnel, the different stakeholders. Uh, what they are asking is to see more of the police, more presence, more patrols, more of the foot patrols in this space. There has been an increase in the number of applications received by the Heart NSDA Trust for its training programs. Speaking recently on Good Morning Minister aired on Love 101 FM, Minister without portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister with oversight for digital transformation and skills, Senator Dr. Dana Morris-Dixon explained that if batches of courses are full at the time of their application, they will be accommodated in a future cohort. I know some people tell me, oh, I apply and they say there's no space for this batch. And I'm like, yeah, but the next batch starts in three months or it starts in six months. So just remember that they're, they, you know, as the programs end, they're taking new cohorts. So if you apply, they will have you on the list and they will put you in the next cohort. So that's important to note. The increase in applicants has been spurred by the removal of fees up to level four and the launch of the $2 billion Learning and Investment for Transformation program. And you may think, oh, the heart fee is not that high. It is high for a child who doesn't have a family that can support them. And so what is important is that we put in place mechanisms for access. And one of the key ones is making things free and making access to skills training free in Jamaica. So, now, to, I can't, so to reiterate, mm -hmm. everything up, to associate, up to associate degree is free. So if I want to certified in carpentry, nursing, food preparation, Ebony Park. Up to electronics. Up to electronics. Robotics. Free. Free. 
The aim of the LIFT program provides sustainable avenues for education, employment and assimilation into society. 2,500 fifth and sixth form graduates are being targeted. At least five Jamaican farm workers have been sent home early from the overseas farm work program in North America amid investigations into recent allegations of victimization. Labor and Social Security Minister Pernell Charles Jr. will be visiting several farms under the program and he has asked for written statements from the repatriated workers. Speaking on the nationwide news network radio segment Ask the Minister on Tuesday, the minister said the visit, which is part of the ongoing investigation, is intended to get an account of the situation. He is quoted saying, I want to go so I can actually get a pretty accurate read of the circumstances to be able to know that the conversations and discussions that we are having are bearing positive fruit, end quote. The minister pointed out that there may be several reasons for the return of the workers, including changes to the climate. According to JIS, the minister, along with senior ministry officials with responsibility for the Overseas Employment Program, have been already meeting with workers and other stakeholders to get a first-hand account of the matter. Meanwhile, Minister Charles Jr. says the ministry is committed to protecting the rights and interests of the workers as well as the integrity of the program. He says farm workers are advised to report challenges to their supervisors and to escalate reports to their assigned liaison officer as needed. Jamaicans are being advised that fishing season for conch is closed. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries says the season is closed from August 8, 2023 to February 29, 2024. During this period, fishing for conch is strictly prohibited. The Ministry explains that prohibition period coincides with the peak breeding season of the species and allows the animals to mature and revive their population. The authorities have specified that all operators of eating establishments, including restaurants, hotels, bed and breakfast, and street side vendors in possession of conch or conch products, are being asked to submit declarations in writing to the National Fisheries Authority, outlining the location, quantity, and level of processing of conch in their possession by August 29. After this date, it is illegal to possess, sell, or process conch meat. In the business report, BOJ's governor warns against massive wage increases. We have that story plus your usual market updates from Danita Rodney. Employers are being cautioned against implementing massive wage increases as Richard Bells, governor at the Bank of Jamaica BOJ, says a large jump in salaries could have a negative effect on inflation. According to Governor Bells, large wage increases translate into increased prices and the push for new cash. He said employers should consider the current rate of price increases when they look to adjust wages. The warning from the BOJ governor comes after the government programmed a multi-billion dollar increase in wage allocations for public sector workers as part of the Public Sector Compensation Review Program. Now for your market updates. In foreign exchange trading for Tuesday, August 22, the U.S. dollar sold for an average of $155.77. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $115.21, the pound sterling traded for $198.97, and the euro sold for an average of $171.47. In GSE trading, the GSE index declined by over 1,867 points, the junior market index declined by 0.28 points. The combined market index declined by over 1,745 points and the All Jamaican Composite Index declined by over 2,282 points. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 105 stocks of which 45 advanced, 45 declined and 15 traded firm. 
Stocks advance for 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited, Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited, and the Caribbean Cream Limited. Stocks declined for 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited Verba Preference, Access Financial Services Limited, and the Berita Investments Limited. Trading firm were Blue Power Group Limited, Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances Limited, and the Epi 7.50% Preference Shares due 2024. The overall volume leaders were Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares with over 3 million units, Trans Jamaican Highway Limited with over 1 million units, and Edifocal Limited with over 900,000 units. In regional stocks in Trinidad and Tobago, Calypso Macro Index Fund was a sole security post in a volume of 1,904 shares. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, Epic Caribbean Property Fund Development Fund was a volume leader with over 10,000 shares. They were followed by Goddard Enterprises Limited, which traded over 3,000 shares. In regional business in Trinidad and Tobago, Public-private partnerships play an active role in developing infrastructures across the Caribbean. This from Associate Partner and Head of Infrastructure at KPMG Cayman Islands, Sam Story. More from GTT News. He was speaking during a webinar hosted by New Energy titled, Taking Stock, Caribbean Infrastructure Opportunities, Priority Sectors and the Project Pipeline on Tuesday. In markets where there is that financial constraint on the public sector side, we're seeing projects moving more into that private finance PPP space, um, whereas whereas the markets that do have deep enough pockets are still um, tending to, to finance things in-house where they can. So so from from an advisory perspective, it's, it's interesting looking at the Caribbean as a whole, because we do have very different, um, different sort of approaches taking place. Managing Director of Investment Banking at CIBC First Caribbean, Adam Carter, explained why many territories opt to use this method for infrastructure projects. ...to incur direct financing themselves, and so the PPP models and the private financing models are very attractive. And um, what we're encouraged by is, is you're seeing, at least certainly for us, you know the, the the definition of infrastructure assets is widening, which which we really really like. I mean, it's now going into digital and food security, and you know Jamaica's got this amazing BPO story, and I think all of those. I think if you can get your head wrapped around it and and look at it as these are really project finance structures, and you're really just assessing the cash flows. The aim of the webinar was to. Add assess the current state of the market and analyze prospects for investment in critical regional infrastructure. It was held in preparation for the Caribbean Infrastructure Forum, CARIF 2023. In international business, U.S. stocks closed mostly lower as investors anxiously awaited more hints on the outlook for interest rates from Federal Reserve officials later this week. The Dow shed half a percent. The S&P 500 dipped about three-tenths of a percent while the Nasdaq remained basically unchanged. Investors are waiting for comments from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, who speaks on Friday at the annual meeting of central bankers in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Although aggressive rate hikes have pushed the annual inflation rate down from roughly 9% to 3%, Philip Palumbo, CEO and Chief Investment Officer of Palumbo Wealth Management, believes Powell will continue doing whatever it takes to achieve the Fed's goal of 2%. Ultimately, the Fed wants and needs a recession to really solve this problem for inflation. You know, wage increases is problematic, right? And that's causing that's a big part of the sticky part of, uh, of inflation. So he would never thought in a million years that as quickly as he risen rates that the economy, in fact, is not only it not only stopped moving down, it's actually starting to reaccelerate a bit here. So I think he's quite surprised that as much as he has done, that things are not even are not worse from an economic standpoint. Investors are also eagerly awaiting results and a forecast from chip heavyweight NVIDIA due after the bell on Wednesday. NVIDIA surprised investors with its strong forecast in May, fueling a rally in its own and other tech stocks on the future promise of artificial intelligence. Shares of NVIDIA hit an all-time high of more than $481 early Tuesday, but were down nearly 3 percent at the close. 
Bank stocks fell, weighing most on the S&P 500, after a downgrade of several regional lenders by S&P Global. And department stores were also among the day's decliners. Macy's sank 14 percent after the chain warned of weak consumer spending through the crucial holiday shopping season. Shares of Kohl's and Nordstrom also each closed down roughly 10 percent. In market data for oil, oil prices slid almost 2 percent as gloomy global manufacturing data grabbed attention ahead of an annual meeting of central bankers at Jackson Hole in the United States, with interest rates high on the agenda. Brent crude was down $1.54 at $82.49 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude was down $1.54 at $78.10. And that was the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Danita Rodney. Thanks, Danita. In regional news, Barbados's ambassador to CARICOM, David Kumsung, says sanctions are impacting the restart of the subsidized oil procurement agreement with Venezuela, Petra Carib. The matter, he says, was among a range of topics discussed by Caribbean heads who met recently in Trinidad and Tobago for the 45th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government. Number one, as always, the yes. Of construction, the CSM. Number two, CARICOM's Agriculture and Food Security Program. Number three, climate change, climate finance, and reform of the international financial system. And all of that, the vehicle for that, is really the Bridgetown Initiative. Um, number four, regional, air, and sea transportation. And, and I heard your new story about the horrors with um, Caribbean Airlines. Um, Haiti, the crisis in Haiti. Crime, how do we solve the epidemic of crime? Right now, we have freedom of movement, but it is restricted to categories of skilled workers or people who are moving to set up um, businesses or set themselves up as self-employment. So we said, we're going beyond that now. We're going towards um, full freedom of movement, but we have the next seven, eight months to work out what amendments we're going to have to make to the revised treaty of Shagaramas, um, what contingent rights come with the, the freedom of movement, um, you know, rights to education, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. How do we, how do we work that out in a manageable, in a manageable way? All eyes are on the island of Hispaniola, shared by the Dominican Republic and Haiti, as a tropical storm Franklin dumps massive rainfall that could trigger heavy flooding on the two nations. According to the National Hurricane Center in Miami, the storm was centered about 105 miles, that's 170 kilometers west, southwest of Santo Domingo, the capital of the Dominican Republic. It had maximum winds of 50 miles per hour with high gusts and was moving northward at 10 miles per hour. Pioneering Antiguan astronauts Keisha Shahaf and Anastasia Mears continue to bask in their historic journey at the edge of space and the pride they have brought to their nation. They were joined by tourism officials at a news conference in St. John's on Tuesday to provide more reactions about their literal out-of-this-world experience. Halisha Humphreys reports. We have to say when we thought somebody from the Caribbean or some persons too from the Caribbean would be going up into space. We probably would be saying 50 years old, 25 years old. So this is a tremendous milestone. Our young women could actually go up into space. And really what brought it home for me, and I think anybody else who would have seen this, is seeing the braids floating. Then I said, yes, they're really in space now. Shahab spoke about the experience of being at the edge of space. It's just a liberating feeling. And it was a feeling of no effort. Like I'm just there, like I'm sitting in my body right now and I can actually feel the pressure coming down on my shoulders and all of that. But being in space with that zero gravity, you actually, you still feel your body, but in a light way, in such a liberating, freeing way. And even thoughts, you're not even feeling your thoughts heavy on you either. The Virgin Galactic space flight took place on August 10, with many across the Caribbean and the globe watching the event. 
Shav spoke about looking back at the home planet. At the moment I looked across and I was like, it just took my breath like that, like the earth, we're actually seeing the earth with our own naked eyes. And it's more magnificent to see it with your own eyes than when you're looking at it from a picture. And she says, Earth actually looks alive from that vantage point. It actually looks living, like if it's pulsating, like if it's breathing with the, the atmosphere, the blue atmosphere around it, you can actually see it almost like the clouds, the clouds are moving, but that's like a fire, like a fiery flame. That's just like, wow, like it's, no words can really explain that. Meyer says this life event has brought her dreams closer to being a reality. It's definitely made me a lot more inspired and a lot more set on my goals. Um, especially going to space and seeing that this what, that this is an opportunity. Uh, it seems so far-fetched, but now going back to university, it's like I know for sure that this is what I want to do and I'm able to do that. At the close of summer, Myers will return to Scotland where she will continue her undergraduate studies. Leisha Humphreys, ABS News. In Trinidad and Tobago, Caribbean airline flights on Tuesday operated as scheduled following several cancellations over the weekend. Caribbean Airlines says all flights logged for Tuesday operated as scheduled. In a release issued on Tuesday afternoon, Kyle said a number of recovery flights also took place to retain passengers stranded in Trinidad and Tobago to their respective destinations. The release stated that measures were put in place after 93 sick calls by 75 pilots between Saturday and Sunday meant the airline had to cancel 60 domestic and international flights. Cal confirmed that return flights to Toronto, Orlando, Guyana, Barbados and Grenada were scheduled to depart on Tuesday with a Toronto flight scheduled for Wednesday. A recovery charter operated on behalf of Cal was scheduled to leave Toronto at 6.30 p.m. to come to Port of Spain and will leave at 12.30 p.m. on Wednesday. In international news, members of the economic bloc known as BRICS are meeting for a second day in Johannesburg. The alliance is made up of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Leaders are looking to present BRICS as a counterweight to the West. Al Jazeera brings us the latest updates. I think the agenda for the rest of the summit is very much linked to everything that you've mentioned around key issues that this BRICS bloc is trying to deal with. And I think primarily also economies of these individual member states and recovery after the COVID-19 pandemic and essentially how these members can help each other. Across the African continent, there appears to be increasing interest in the bloc and member states of the bloc are equally interested in expanding across this continent and developing infrastructure, uh, developing economies, boosting economies and providing a platform where these countries can grow and ultimately potentially through the new development uh, bank which provides an attractive option for developing nations uh, with regard to more uh, favorable uh, conditions around loans and investment. If expansion is also on the agenda related to at least 23 countries that have applied to join this bloc and also the issue of what's been called de-dollarization where these countries want to rely on their individual currencies more, move away from the dollar in terms of trade. There's been talk around a BRICS currency but there's been no consensus on that and it's also not clear whether that in itself is desirable for these member states so it's about just using local currencies more uh, to, to move away from the dollar so certainly a sort of independence from Western dominance uh, and also expansion of the bloc and boosting the economies of existing and potential members. Okay Fami there's some big ambitions a lot of interest from other countries to join but how much do we expect the group to achieve at the summit when there are clear differences between members such as India and China and also differences between members' relationship with the US and the West, just to name a few divergences. When a country like South Africa, for example, in, in, in the BRICS bloc, is a country that's trying to balance these interests between uh, its, its, its investment within BRICS, its relationship with countries like Russia and China, and then balancing that with its relationship with the West, with the US and the European Union. And, and when you talk about these sort of divergent characteristics of these countries, that's a problem for South Africa where it's trying to balance something like that. But ultimately, we're looking at countries like Russia and China who do want to move away from that 
Western dominance. And this is something that might bring these countries together. How effective it could be, I suppose, is questionable. In sports, we have news from the World Athletics Championship. Three Jamaican men have made history in advancing to the global men's long jump final. Wayne Pinnock with a world-leading jump of 8.54 meters, Kerry McDonald 8.19 meters, and Jay Gale at 8.12 meters. Antonio Watson could become Jamaica's second World Championships men's 400 meters gold medalist. Bertland Cameron won the first title in 1983. Watson ran a personal best 44.13 seconds in the semi-finals on Tuesday to lead all qualifiers into the final. Watson and national champion Sean Bailey, who was second in his semi-final, will carry Jamaica's hopes into the final, a first for both. And that's the news on PBCJ. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Thanks for watching.